Michael Stanley Dukakis, born November 3, 1933, is a retired American politician who served as the 65th governor of Massachusetts from 1975 to 1979 and again from 1983 to 1991. He is the longest serving governor in Massachusetts history and only the second Greek American governor in US history after Spiro Agnew. He was nominated by the Democratic Party for president in the 1988 election, losing to the Republican candidate, Vice President George H. W. Bush. Born in Brookline, Massachusetts to Greek and Aromanian Greek immigrants, Dukakis attended Swarthmore College before enlisting in the United States Army. After graduating from Harvard Law School, he won election to the Massachusetts House of Representatives, serving from 1963 to 1971. He won the 1974 Massachusetts gubernatorial election but lost his 1978 bid for renomination to Edward J. King. He defeated King in the 1982 gubernatorial primary and served as governor from 1983 to 1991, presiding over a period of economic growth known as the Massachusetts Miracle. Building on his popularity as governor, Dukakis sought the Democratic presidential nomination for the 1988 presidential election. He prevailed in the Democratic primaries and was formally nominated at the 1988 Democratic National Convention. Dukakis chose Senator Lloyd Benson of Texas as his running mate, while the Republicans nominated a ticket consisting of George H. W. Bush and Senator Dan Quayle. Dukakis lost the election, carrying only 10 states and Washington, D.C., but he improved on the Democratic performance in the previous two elections. After the election, Dukakis announced that he would not seek another term as governor, and he left office in 1991. Since leaving office, Dukakis has served on the board of directors for Amtrak and has taught political science at Northeastern University and UCLA. He was mentioned as a potential appointee to the Senate in 2009 to fill the vacancy caused by Ted Kennedy's death, but Governor Deval Patrick chose Paul G. Kirk. In 2012, Dukakis backed the successful Senate campaign of Elizabeth Warren. Topic: Early life and education. Dukakis was born in Brookline, Massachusetts. His father Panos (1896–1979) was a Greek immigrant from Adramathion, Edramit, in Asia Minor, which was then part of the Ottoman Empire. Panos Dukakis settled in Lowell, Massachusetts, in 1912, and graduated from Harvard Medical School 12 years later, subsequently working as an obstetrician. Dukakis' mother Euterpe was an Aromanian Greek immigrant from Larissa, in Thessaly. She and her family emigrated to Haverhill, Massachusetts, in 1913. Dukakis attended Brookline High School in his hometown, where he was an honor student and a member of the basketball, baseball, tennis, and cross-country teams. As a 17-year-old senior in high school, he ran the Boston Marathon. He graduated from Swarthmore College in 1955 with a B.A. in history. Although Dukakis had been accepted into Harvard Law School, he chose to enlist in the United States Army. After basic training at Fort Dix and advanced individual training at Camp Gordon, he was assigned as radio operator to the 8,020th Administrative Unit in Munson, South Korea. The unit was a support group to the United Nations Delegation of the Military Armistice Commission Dukakis served from 1955 to 1957. He then received his J.D. degree from Harvard Law School in 1960. Dukakis is also an Eagle Scout and recipient of the Distinguished Eagle Scout Award from the Boy Scouts of America. Dukakis began his political career as an elected town meeting member in the town of Brookline. <laughs> <laughs> Massachusetts Governor <laughs> <laughs> First Governorship 1975 After serving four terms in the Massachusetts House of Representatives between 1962 and 1970 and winning the Democratic nomination for lieutenant governor in 1970, Dukakis was elected governor in 1974, defeating the incumbent Republican Francis Sargent during a period of fiscal crisis. Dukakis won in part by promising to be a reformer and pledging a lead pipe guarantee of no new taxes to balance the state budget. He would later reverse his position after taking office. 
He also pledged to dismantle the powerful Metropolitan District Commission MDC, a bureaucratic enclave that served as home to hundreds of political patronage employees. The MDC managed state parks, reservoirs, and waterways, as well as the highways and roads abutting those waterways. In addition to its own police force, the MDC had its own maritime patrol force, and an enormous budget from the state, for which it provided minimal accounting. Dukakis' efforts to dismantle the MDC failed in the legislature, where the MDC had many powerful supporters. As a result, the MDC would withhold its critical backing of Dukakis in the 1978 gubernatorial primary. Governor Dukakis hosted President Gerald Ford and Britain's Queen Elizabeth II during their visits to Boston in 1976 to commemorate the bicentennial of the United States. He gained some notice as the only politician in the state government who went to work during the blizzard of 1978, during which he went to local TV studios in a sweater to announce emergency bulletins. Dukakis is also remembered for his 1977 exoneration of Sacco and Vanzetti, two Italian anarchists whose trial sparked protests around the world. During his first term in office, Dukakis commuted the sentences of 21 first-degree murderers and 23 second-degree murderers. His first term performance proved to be insufficient to offset a backlash against the state's high sales and property tax rates, which turned out to be the predominant issue in the 1978 gubernatorial campaign. Dukakis, despite being the incumbent Democratic governor, was refused renomination by his own party. The state's Democratic Party chose to support director of the Massachusetts Port Authority Edward J. King in the primary, partly because King rode the wave against high property taxes, but more significantly because state Democratic Party leaders lost confidence in Dukakis' ability to govern effectively. King also enjoyed the support of the power brokers at the MDC, who were unhappy with Dukakis' attempts to dismantle their powerful bureaucracy. King also had support from state police and public employee unions. Dukakis suffered a scathing defeat in the primary, a disappointment that his wife Kitty called a public death. Topic: <laughs> Cabinet. Topic: <laughs> Second governorship 1983 to 1991. Four years later, having made peace with the State Democratic Party, MDC, the State Police and Public Employee Unions, Dukakis defeated King in a rematch in the 1982 Democratic primary. He went on to defeat his Republican opponent, John Winthrop Sears, in the November election. Future United States Senator, 2004 Democratic presidential nominee, and U.S. Secretary of State John Kerry was elected lieutenant governor on the same ballot with Dukakis, and served in the Dukakis administration from 1983 to 1985. Dukakis served as governor during which time he presided over a high-tech boom and a period of prosperity in Massachusetts while simultaneously earning a reputation as a technocrat. The National Governors Association voted Dukakis the most effective governor in 1986. Residents of the city of Boston and its surrounding areas remember him for the improvements he made to Boston's mass transit system, especially major renovations to the city's trains and buses. He was known for riding the subway to work every day as governor. In 1988, Dukakis and Rosabeth Moss Conter, his economic advisor in the 1988 presidential elections, wrote a book entitled Creating the Future The Massachusetts Comeback and Its Promise for America, an examination of the Massachusetts miracle. Cabinet 1988-1991 Using the phenomenon termed the Massachusetts Miracle to promote his campaign, Dukakis sought the Democratic Party nomination for President of the United States in the 1988 United States presidential election, prevailing over a primary field that included Jesse Jackson, Dick Gephardt, Paul Simon, Gary Hart, Joe Biden, and Al Gore, among others. Touching on his immigrant roots, Dukakis used Neil Diamond's Ode to Immigrants, America, as the theme song for his campaign. Composer John Williams wrote, Fanfare for Michael Dukakis, in 1988 at the request of Dukakis's father-in-law, Harry Ellis Dixon. The piece was premiered under the baton of Dixon then the associate conductor of the Boston Pops at that year's Democratic National Convention. Dukakis won the Democratic nomination, with 2,877 out of 4,105 delegates. 
He chose Senator Lloyd Benson of Texas to be his vice presidential running mate. Dukakis was pro choice on the issue of abortion. Dukakis had trouble with the personality that he projected to the voting public. His reserved and stoic nature was easily interpreted to be a lack of passion. Dukakis was often referred to as Zorba the Clerk. Nevertheless, Dukakis is considered to have done well in the first presidential debate with George Bush, but in the second debate, his performance was poor and played to his reputation as being cold. During the campaign, Dukakis's mental health became an issue when he refused to release his full medical history and there were, according to the New York Times, persistent suggestions that he had undergone psychiatric treatment in the past. The issue gained further traction after a White House press conference, during which President Ronald Reagan flippantly referred to Dukakis as an invalid. In the 2008 film Boogie Man, The Lee Atwater Story, journalist Robert Novak revealed that Republican strategist Lee Atwater had personally tried to get him to spread these mental health rumors. Editors at The Washington Times contributed to these rumors when they ran a story headlined, Dukakis Kin Hints at Sessions. Suggesting that a member of the Dukakis family had said, It is possible that Dukakis saw a psychiatrist. A week later, the reporter, Jean Grabowski, revealed that Times editors had taken the full quote out of context. The full quote was, It's possible, but I doubt it. Dukakis' general election campaign was subject to several criticisms and gaffes on issues such as capital punishment, the Pledge of Allegiance in schools, and a photograph of Dukakis in a tank which was intended to portray him as a sound choice for commander-in-chief but which was widely perceived to have backfired. Like the allegations of psychiatric problems, these were vulnerabilities which Atwater identified and exploited. In 1991, shortly before his death from a brain tumor, Atwater apologized to Dukakis for the naked cruelty of the 1988 campaign. Topic. Crime During the campaign, Vice President George H. W. Bush, the Republican nominee, criticized Dukakis for his traditionally liberal positions on many issues, calling him a card-carrying member of the ACLU. Dukakis's support for a prison furlough program was a major election subject. During his first term as governor, he had vetoed a bill that would have stopped furloughs for first-degree murderers. During his second term, that program resulted in the release of convicted murderer Willie Horton, who committed a rape and assault in Maryland after being furloughed. George H. W. Bush mentioned Horton by name in a speech in June 1988, and a Conservative Political Action Committee PAC affiliated with the Bush campaign, the National Security Political Action Committee, aired an ad entitled, Weekend Passes which used a mugshot image of Horton. The Bush campaign refused to repudiate the ad. It was followed by a separate Bush campaign ad, Revolving Door, criticizing Dukakis over the furlough program without mentioning Horton. The legislature canceled the program during Dukakis's last term. The issue of capital punishment came up in the October 13, 1988, debate between the two presidential nominees. Because she knew the Willie Horton issue would be brought up, Dukakis's campaign manager, Susan Estrick, had prepared with Michael Dukakis an answer highlighting the candidate's empathy for victims of crime, noting the beating of his father in a robbery and the death of his brother in a hit and run. However, when Bernard Shaw, the moderator of the debate, asked Dukakis, Governor, if Kitty Dukakis, his wife, were raped and murdered, would you favor an irrevocable death penalty for the killer? Dukakis replied, no, I don't, and I think you know that I've opposed the death penalty during all of my life," and explained his stance. Topic. Tank photograph Dukakis was criticized during the campaign for a perceived softness on defense issues, particularly the controversial, Star Wars, program, which he promised to weaken. In response to this, Dukakis orchestrated what would become the key image of his campaign, although it turned out quite differently from what he intended. On September 13, 1988 Dukakis visited the General Dynamics Land Systems plant in Sterling Heights, Michigan, to take part in a photo op in an M1 Abrams tank. The Prime Minister of the United Kingdom, Margaret Thatcher, had been photographed in a similar situation in 1986, riding in a Challenger tank while wearing a scarf. Compared with Dukakis' results, Thatcher's picture was very successful and helped her re-election prospects. 
Footage of Dukakis was used in television ads by the Bush campaign, as evidence that Dukakis would not make a good commander-in-chief, and Dukakis in the tank remains shorthand for backfired public relations outings. Topic. Outcome The Dukakis-Benson ticket lost the election by a decisive margin in the Electoral College to George H. W. Bush and Dan Quayle, carrying only 10 states and the District of Columbia. Dukakis himself blamed his defeat on the time he spent doing gubernatorial work in Massachusetts during the few weeks following the Democratic Convention. Many believed he should have been campaigning across the country. During this time, his 17-point lead in opinion polls completely disappeared, as his lack of visibility allowed Bush to define the issues of the campaign. Dukakis has since stated that the main reason he lost was his decision not to respond to the Bush attack campaign, and in retrospect it was a pretty dumb decision. Despite Dukakis's loss, his performance was a marked improvement over the previous two Democratic efforts. Dukakis made some strong showings in states that had voted for Republicans Ronald Reagan and Gerald Ford. He managed to pull off a close win in New York which at the time was the second largest state in terms of electoral votes. He also scored victories in states like Rhode Island, Hawaii, and Dukakis's home state of Massachusetts. Walter Mondale had lost all four, and since then, all three states have remained in the Democratic column for each subsequent presidential election. He swept Iowa, winning by 10 points in a state that had voted Republican in the last five presidential elections. He won 43% of the vote in Kansas, a surprising showing in the home state of 1936 Republican presidential nominee Alf Landon, Republican President Dwight Eisenhower, and future Republican nominee Bob Dole. In another surprising showing, he received 47% of the vote in South Dakota, while in Montana, Dukakis won 46% of the vote in a state that had voted over 60% Republican four years earlier. Although Dukakis cut into the Republican hold in the Midwest, he failed to dent the emerging GOP stronghold in the South that had been forming since the end of World War II with a temporary reprieve with Jimmy Carter, along with future President and Southern Democrat Bill Clinton, albeit to a much lesser extent. He lost most of the South by a wide margin, with Bush's totals reaching around 60% in most states. He was able to hold Bush to 55% in Texas, though this was most likely due to Texan Lloyd Benson's presence on the ticket. He also carried most of the southern central parishes of Louisiana, despite losing the state. He held onto the border state of West Virginia, and he captured 48% of the vote in Missouri. He also carried 41% in Oklahoma, a bigger share than any Democrat since Jimmy Carter. Dukakis won 41,809,476 votes in the popular vote. He also received 40% or more in Arkansas, California, Colorado, Connecticut, Delaware, Illinois, Kansas, Kentucky, Louisiana, Maine, Maryland, Michigan, Missouri, Montana, New Jersey, New Mexico, North Carolina, North Dakota, Ohio, Oklahoma, South Dakota, Tennessee, Texas, and Vermont. Overall, the 1988 election showed a marked improvement in the popular vote for the Democrats. While he lost the popular vote, Dukakis's margin of loss 7 .8 was narrower than Jimmy Carter's in 1980 9 or Walter Mondale's in 1984 In 2008, he stated during an interview with Katie Couric that he owed the American people an apology because if I had beaten the old man i.e. George H. W. Bush, we never would have heard of the kid i.e. George W. Bush, and we wouldn't be in this mess. Topic. After the presidential run In early January 1989, Dukakis announced that he would not run for a fourth term. His final two years as governor were marked by increased criticism of his policies and significant tax increases to cover the economic effects of the U.S. economy's soft landing at the end of the 1980s and the recession of 1990. After the end of his term, he served on the board of directors for Amtrak, and became a professor of political science at Northeastern University, a visiting professor of political science at Loyola Marymount University, and visiting professor in the Department of Public Policy at the Luskin School of Public Affairs at UCLA. 
Along with a number of other notable Greek Americans, he is a founding member of the Next Generation Initiative, a leadership program aimed at getting students involved in public affairs. In November 2008, Northeastern named its Center for Urban and Regional Policy after Michael Dukakis and his wife Kitty. In August 2009, the 75 year old Dukakis was mentioned as one of two leading candidates as a possible interim successor to Ted Kennedy in the U.S. Senate, after Kennedy's death. Instead, Governor Patrick named Paul G. Kirk, the other leading candidate and favorite of the Kennedy family who promised not to run in the special election, to fill the seat. In 2012, he worked to support the successful candidacy of fellow Democrat Elizabeth Warren to the U.S. Senate. He has also been an advocate for effective public transportation and high speed rail as a solution to automobile congestion and the lack of space at airports, and for extended learning time initiative in public schools. Dukakis stated on January 31, 2014, that he was not in favor of an effort to rename South Station as the Gov. Michael S. Dukakis Transportation Center. He went on to state that he would not object to the naming of the as yet unbuilt North South Rail Link after him. Topic. Electoral history Topic. Family Dukakis is married to Catherine D. Kitty Dukakis. They have three children, John, Andrea, and Kara. During the second presidential debate on October 13, 1988, in Los Angeles, Dukakis revealed that he and his wife had had another child, who died about 20 minutes after birth. Dukakis is the cousin of actress Olympia Dukakis. The Dukakises continue to reside in the home that they bought in the early 1970s in Brookline, Massachusetts, where they both grew up, but live in Los Angeles during the winter while he teaches at UCLA. Topic. See also Michael Dukakis presidential campaign, 1988. Topic. References Topic. Further reading Carlson, Margaret June 20, 1988. A Tale of Two Childhoods. Time. Ducat, Stephen J. 2004. The Wimp Factor, Gender Gaps, Holy Wars, and the Politics of Anxious Masculinity. Boston, Beacon Press. pp. 84-99. ISBN 0 8070 4344 3. Nyhan, David. The Duke, The Inside Story of a Political Phenomenon. Warner Books. ISBN 0 446 35454 6. Rutman, Larry. Voices of Brookline. Portsmouth, New Hampshire, Peter E. Randall. pp. XVIIXX and 194 198. ISBN 1-931807-39-6 External links Michael Dukakis on IMDb Faculty page at the Northeastern University Department of Political Science Faculty page at UCLA the Michael S. Dukakis Presidential Campaign Records, 1962-1989 bulk 1987-1988 are located in the Northeastern University Libraries, Archives and Special Collections Department, Boston, Massachusetts. The Joseph D. Warren Papers, 1972-2003 bulk 1980-1990 are located in the Northeastern University Libraries, Archives and Special Collections Department, Boston, Massachusetts. Dukakis discusses presidential debates as reported in the Harvard Law Record Dukakis mentioned on MSNBC's Morning Joe, the scoop on Boogeyman Appearances on C-SPAN